Hey, what's going on? Sean Stewart here, Alamo City Cello. I'm really excited about this pickup system that I've been working on, and I want to talk more about what it is and the sort of breakthroughs that I came to. Um, and also I want to talk about why I got into this and, and what my goals are. So my goals are very clear. I want to take my cello and make it sound like a Stradivarius. So uh, I was lucky enough to play on some of the great instruments out there. Um, a friend of mine, Evan Drachman, is the grandson of Gregor Piatigorsky. And he had inherited Pi uh, Piatigorsky's Stradivarius cello, which is considered one of the great instruments. And I got a chance to play that. And it was just like a bottomless pit of tone. I mean, you, the more you'd press, the more it would just give you, it would give you more. And to the point, it was actually like pushing back a little bit. Um, it was a fantastic an instrument that had penetrating sound. It would go right through you. It was really a magnificent instrument. And another one was Colin Carr's Gaffiller. This was an old Italian instrument. It was so wide, I could barely get my knees around this thing. It was like a baby bass. And it was a boomer. These were big time, big sounding instruments. So I had that in my ear and I thought, one day I want a cello that sounds like that. Well, guess what? Those cellos are really, really expensive. <laughs> I mean, you could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on an axe like that. So I thought maybe there's some sort of way that I could cheat, right? So blending the uh, natural acoustic sound with some something else to add something to the sound, give it a little boost and create that sound that I hear in my ear. So I thought, okay, there's a couple different ways to go. You can go with a microphone, but really for live application, I think that's the wrong way to go. And let me explain why I think a microphone's not the way to go. Okay, so if you think about the way a violin works, you pull the bow across the string, it vibrates through that kinetic energy goes into the bridge, and that energy is trans, trans you know, uh, cr it creates the sound. It creates sound waves at that point. Okay, so so what, 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 what a microphone will do is it, you, you've got to first pull the string and then it goes through all these you know, various machinations and then it goes through the air and then it finally gets to the microphone. That's not where you want to capture it. You want to capture it at the source. You want to go to this, you want to get as close as you can get to the string. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Brian Duckworth, he's, he's up in, in, in uh, um, New Braunfels. He has a Duckworth violin shop. Uh, really great guy. He um, he said, and this was kind of somewhat suggestive, but he said that he wanted the, the hairs of his bow to have an intimate relationship with the string. <laughs> an intimate relationship with the string. And so that stuck in my ear because that's where you want to amplify from. Not from, you know, 20 steps out. It's kind of like going analog, analog, analog. Yeah, every time you do that, you're going to introduce noise, introduce, yeah. It's, it's not where you want to be. You want to be on the string on the string. So I thought, okay, there's something in this pickup idea that I like. And, and I started playing with them and I was all set to have my Strad, you know, I thought, okay, you know, I'm just gonna put on a pickup and get a little baby amp and we'll be good to go. So I went out and bought the Realist, which is considered the best, right? And I put that on my cello and I said, uh, it sounds boxy and squawky. It, it doesn't sound like the Strad that I'm envisioning in my mind's ear here. I'm not getting close to that, right? So. I thought, okay, um, I'm gonna try different ones. I tried K and K. I tried LR bags. I tried Fishman. Um, what else? Um, Schlater. That was an interesting one because that was a contact microphone that attaches to the body, and all it did was distort the top end. I heard all this sizzle on the top end. It didn't. It didn't sound good. It really didn't. So I thought to myself, okay, what's what's going on here? How come this sounds so bad? <clears throat> so I call up <clears throat> so I call up Terry Muska, and he's a great guitarist here in San Antonio. I say, Terry, what's going on? And he goes, You need to talk to this guy, Lucio Mundo, right? So I call him up and he's a luthier maker here, uh, makes guitars. And, and I said, uh, Lucio, what's going on with this? And he goes, Look, he goes, You need a preamp between the pickup and your amplifier, you know. You, you start with that, see if that helps. So I went out and picked up this thing right here. It's the LR Bags Venue. And this is what he recommended. And it's top of the line, it's great. It has EQ functions and all, a lot of bells and whistles and all that, the tuner on it. But he, he tells me, 
And this is what caught my attention. He goes, it does more than that. He goes, it matches impedance between the pickup and the amplifier. So now I had heard a little bit about impedance from ham radio operating, you know, take a test and they, you know, they, t they start talking about impedance in, in, in elementary school and all that. And th my understanding of impedance is that basically it's the resistance that's on a circuit under load. So when there's a voltage going through a circuit, there's a certain resistance that goes there. Well, anyways, you want to match this impedance between the pickup and the, uh, the final source, which is going to be an amplifier, a small amp. So anyway, so uh, this kind of stuck in my ear because, you know, it's like I was designing antennas. You know, it's kind of my way of designing. I just explain this to you is you know, like Roy Rogers meets... Um, you know, Thomas uh, Edison, it's just kind of like try it and see what happens. And if you like that, and if you don't, kind of trial and error. So, I, you know, I figured out that the length of the wire becomes very important in an antenna because it becomes resonant at certain lengths. That's why, you know, they make, they make antennas to be certain, you know, you know, it's almost like a cello string. You want it exactly a certain length in order to create that frequency, right? So the, the, the length of the wire becomes really important. So I think, well, wait a minute, maybe I can influence the impedance. And, you know, maybe there's something there. So I go and get this really long wire, right? I had left over from antennas. I twisted them together and, and I plugged it in. And then way in the other room was the amplifier. And I'm playing this and, and you can't hear anything. The only thing you'd hear was AM radio because it was acting like an antenna. It was picking up all the stuff. So I shorten it and I keep shortening it and shortening it. And then it starts to sound pretty good. And I short some more and it's like, that sounds even better. And I get to a certain length where it sounds the best I've heard. And I go, well, I'll just keep going shorter. And then it gets worse again. So I had found the sweet spot. I had found the exact length of this wire. The, not only the length, but the diameter on the wire too. I tried some experiments using thicker or thinner wires. Right. So it all kind of comes together. So I think I start saying, okay, it's got to be a certain length. Okay. So most of the pickup systems that you're going to see, like I've got, I've got, I put one on my cello to show you. I'm going to show you this. Here's a more traditional pickup that you're going to see. And this is The Realist by David Gage. And here's, here's the setup here. Let's see if I can get this and you can see this. It's, um, it's this, a quarter inch jack, and there's a lead wire, and then it goes underneath the sea foot of the bridge. Here's the major reason I don't like this, is that what do you plug this into? And how long is that wire going to be? And what's the impedance going to be there? And there's too many variables here. Because if the wire is too long, it's going to sound really bad without a preamp. But if you get that length just right, and you have that terminate in a quarter inch, just keep it keep it simple. Keep it real simple, right? This, this you, you just go into quarter inch jack. You don't need to, you know, it's masculine quarter inch. Just goes right into an, an amp direct. This is so much better. And when I got the impedance right from the beginning, I didn't need the preamp anymore. In fact, it didn't sound as good. Oddly enough, it didn't sound as good. Now, I knew that was true from my antennas. Because what I would do is like, you, you have an impedance mis mismatch machine. They call it an antenna tuner. It doesn't do anything of the sort. It just fools your transceiver to think that there's a one-to-one -one match. But there's no one-to-one -one match. So it's spitting out all this power to an antenna basic antenna system that it's the the impedance is not right the length of the wire makes the difference so if you get that right then you're going to get it right at the source you get that wrong and it's going to sound squawky and bad it's that simple so i'm really excited about this because quite honestly it's the best i've heard it's the best i've heard I think that if you blend, a, a, let's say, 75% natural cello sound, 25% pickup, 
that will give you enough tonal variation and enough power to make this instrument right here sound like my teacher Strad. That's what I'm saying. So if you're in a situation where you're playing Schumann concerto and you really don't want those little those notes, some of those notes to get lost when the when the brass are blowing because you know maybe that's not the greatest orchestrated piece that's ever been but it's still you know, if you know if the cello just had a little bit more power this is what this distinguishing feature is between a good cello and a great cello these tonal characteristics and people are used used to spending big money for this well i'm here to tell you you don't have to spend big big money you can get there with what you're the axe that you have with a little help from technology